The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship on this Lord's Day. Welcome to all of those of you who I would normally see sitting in these pews. And welcome to all of you who are gathering from across the nation and across the globe, wherever you may find yourselves uh, on this Sunday morning or afternoon or perhaps another day of the week. Uh, we are grateful for your presence with us in worship and uh, as always invite your participation. Uh, the bulletin can be downloaded from the website and it's on the YouTube as well. I want to also uh, give a word, offer a word of thanks and appreciation for all of you here in Worcester who joined together last Friday evening for the Juneteenth uh, March for Black Lives Matter here in Worcester, Ohio, marching down to the square. It was a beautiful evening and it was a, a powerful representation of our voices, of our multiracial um, act of solidarity, standing up for lives like George Floyd and so many other people of color who have died at the hands of white policemen. And I, I want us to remember that this is an ongoing effort. So don't let your work flag at this time. We must continue to press for reform. We must continue our attempts to change, to go in another direction in terms of racism that has, that has besmirched and still darkly shadows this nation. So again, I, a word of encouragement. Uh, keep, keep up the good work. Keep up the good work. We are graced this morning to have Anne Gasteyer in our pulpit uh, preaching for us, and I thank Anne for doing that. Thank, as always, um, our liturgist. Today it's Rachel King our wonderful church muse musician, Eric Gasteyer, and uh, our recording engineer, Jacob Gooch. We could not do this without the participation of these uh, very talented, uh, gifted, and generous people. I want to say, too, that the beautiful flowers that you will see by the pulpit are donated by Don Bean and Pat Miles, and their dedication today is in honor and appreciation of all those creating meaningful virtual church services every week. And I would say that includes not just the services we do here at First Presbyterian Worcester, but all of those services that are going on all over the country and probably all over the world, uh, reaching out to local congregations while at the same time inviting a much larger congregation to join and tune in as well. So thank you very much, Don and Pat, for that. And now let us prepare our hearts to worship God. Good morning. This morning we have three pieces of music from the British Isles early in the 20th century. First of all, a beautiful elegy by C. Hubert H. Perry, the composer of the famous tune Jerusalem. He wrote this particular piece specifically for the funeral of a former member of parliament in 1917. For the musical offering today, likely the most famous melody ever penned by Gustav Holst from his planets, uh, one of the themes from the Jupiter movement. Holst himself made this into a hymn tune which appears in many hymnals, unfortunately not ours. And the most common tune here in the US is, O oh God beyond all praising, we worship you today. Finally, the postlude is by Gordon Jacob, who was for many years a teacher at the Royal College of Music in London. For during his lifetime, he was looked down upon a bit for his rather traditional music, but fortunately today, we no longer suffer from that impression. Thank you.
invite you to join me in our call to worship. Welcome, in the name of God, you are welcome here. The arms of God are stretched out wide, ready to embrace all with love. You who are thirsty for the presence of God, welcome, and may your thirst be satisfied. We come seeking to know God's love through the care of this community. Come, let us drink deeply of God's presence and share this grace, even at a distance, with one another. Let us pray. O oh God, we turn to you and ask to hear a word of kindness. Do not let us be disappointed. We trust in your steadfast love and our hearts rejoice in your saving ways. May we see your bountiful mercy once again as we lift our song of praise to you. Amen. Please join in our prayer of confession. God works in us, through us, and with us to heal the pain we cause one another when we turn away, when we shove aside, when we do not listen, when we do not share, when we judge one another, when we reject one another. God works in us, through us, with us, to be the faith that makes all things well. As we bring our brokenness to God, God forgives us and works with us to heal our hurts and those of the world. Rejoice in the Holy One. Rejoice in the steadfast love of God. Gracious God, hear our prayers. Amen. May the God of steadfastness and grace grant us to live in harmony with the world. May the God of hope fill us with joy. May the God of love grant us to abide in compassion so as to live in unity together as the body of Christ. May we abound in hope and live in peace with one another and all creation. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. As we prepare to close our eyes and bow our heads in prayer to God, let us invite as our prayer partner, the Apostle Paul, who writes to his friends in the church at Philippi, calling them to be faithful and to be thankful. Paul is in prison, in shackles. Let us pray. O most gracious God, whose name your people for 2,000 years have met together or apart in church buildings, in caves, in homes, in shacks, in open fields, in free lands and occupied countries, but always in prayer to the God who hears and who cares. We come in the spirit of your follower, Paul, who reminds us today in everything, everything, with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, to let ourselves be known to God through our requests. And so we begin by thanking you for the life you have given us and for those you have given us to love and to love us and to join with us in the mission of love in this world, this often bright but sometimes dark world where we and those around us are privileged to live. We thank you that it is on the darkest of nights that the stars shine the brightest that even in difficult times, especially in difficult times, we are primed to learn new lessons of love, of caring, of sharing, of giving. We have seen heroism of the highest order in these days just past, and we may well see much more in the days ahead. We have learned to cling more tightly to the people we love, even if we are separated by steep walls and locked doors and 24-hour curfews and long, long miles. Our prayers today are especially with those who have few people or no people to love. We pray earnestly for those of our own number who are in retirement centers and nursing homes and hospitals in particular, those whose lives are shortening right now, who are ever more dependent on those nearest to them. 
we pray for the younger members of our congregation, those whose plans are now in limbo, whose future steps are more difficult to discern as their new worlds become filled with moving parts. Everyone among us and our neighbors and our, those in our communities and friends around the world, younger and older, are experiencing with us a social earthquake. We pray for those who have lived so long on the underside of our culture, viewed and treated by many of the rest of us as somehow less. Help us to leave behind our ancient animus and to enter a new day where equality is spelled with a capital E. We pray for those who are still learning to care for the welfare of others, those whose sense of community right now seems underdeveloped, those who are still learning to be productive parts of the team, the human team, where each is dependent on all and where each cares for the other. Our prayers rest with all this day who are in government, who are leading in education and in industry and labor and the vital world of public health. Give them, we pray, the basics of good leadership, a desire to lead by serving, a commitment to ethical relationships, a willingness to learn and to grow and to support others in their growth, a commitment to honesty and fairness. And help us to remember that we ought not to expect of our leaders anything better than what we are prepared to accept for ourselves. We pray your blessing this day on the leaders of our own congregation and the newly elected leaders of our denomination. May nothing less than the spirit of Christ animate their work and may we all be prepared to be, take more than our part for the good of the whole church. Be now the shepherd of this flock, our guide on the way of our pilgrimage, that we may mark the path well for those who follow, as they one day will join us in the prayer our Lord continues to teach all who would follow as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
The scripture today is from Psalm 13, a prayer for deliverance from thine enemies. To the choir master, a Psalm of David. How long, O Lord, wilt thou forget me forever? How long will thy hide thy face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Lighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed over him. Lest my foes rejoice, because I am shaken. But I have trusted in thy steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing to the Lord, because he has dealt bountifully to me. Amen. What a difficult time we are in, full of fear. Fear for ourselves, for our family, our community, our country, and our world. When we hear the news of the coronavirus, we wonder if we or our loved ones will be next. The sickness, the suffering, alone in a hospital with no one near. And we fear for our economy. What will happen to our jobs, our security, our institutions like this very church when money seems to come and go like quicksilver? And racism, America's greatest sin. As we watch cities as large as Chicago or Miami or Minneapolis or as small as Worcester, Ohio, demonstrate demanding justice, demanding many of the rights most of us feel we deserve as Americans. But somehow, those rights have never been extended evenly. The cry is for peace, but first, we must acknowledge the violence. Like many, I can't sleep well these days, although I used to read a book a week, I can't read much either. I've never enjoyed watching television, so I head outside. I've turned to my garden, making up for the neglect of the pre- and post-transplant years as I dig holes, pull weeds, and move plants around with energy and intention that I should probably save for more important tasks. What can we do at this difficult and painful time when so much that was familiar to us has been taken? We cannot go to the library. We cannot gather with friends or family. We cannot celebrate high school or college graduations or witness weddings or grieve with loved ones at funerals. And we cannot gather in our own sanctuary to worship. How can we survive to those better days we hope are waiting? I have three ideas to share with you today, and I share them with hope that you will feel hope. First, look up. Look up to God with courage, for strength, and for wisdom. And then look back, because history can repeat itself and teach us valuable lessons. And then look out to see what we can do for others. Look up. The psalmist today tells us that they are lonely for God, as are we today. As people, we have struggled, and we will always struggle. When we feel alone, overwhelmed, and forgotten, we can turn to the Psalms, where every emotion from all times seems to be addressed. Whenever I read the Bible, I pick and choose what stays with me. And in Psalm 13, it is the last two verses. But I have trusted in thy steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation, and I will sing to the Lord, because he has dealt bountifully with me. I have spoken from the pulpit that I sing in my car. I drive 300 miles a week for work, or I used to, and it was a good time to sing loudly and robustly, if not always musically, and hymns lift my spirit as I drive along. Lately, I've been singing Amazing Grace with the frequency, especially the verse that reads, through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will bring me home. I encourage you to find a way to connect with God. Read your Bible, sing some hymns, pray what is on your hearts and on your minds, and look up and know that you are not alone. And then look back. In my own life, I have had some very painful times, 
but nothing compares to this time. Because I've always loved history, I find myself thinking back a century to the Spanish flu epidemic, and then to the 1930s and 40s, and my parents' memories of the polio epidemic and my mother's quarantine with scarlet fever. Today, I read from my grandmother's Bible to help inspire me to find the lessons we can learn from looking back in time. My grandmother, Helen Kane, married Walter Hadley in Bowling Green on a summer day in June, and the local newspaper reported that she was a lovely bride. I don't know what the first few months were like for the couple, but it was 1929. And by November, they had moved back in with her parents and her siblings. From my grandmother, I learned to know my own strengths or weaknesses, to manage my money, or it would manage me, and not to complain, because no one wants to hear it. I am not sure what they thought married life would be like, but I have their wedding sampler in my home, and it reads, the blessing of the house is contentment. Inspiration from 91 years ago that is just as timely today. Look back and see what lessons the past can provide for you. And then look out. As bad as things have been since the middle of March, I am constantly reminded that for some people, it's been worse. In addition to our collective concerns, life has gone on in some very cruel ways. Relationships crumble. Homes are dismantled. Cars need extensive repairs or replacement. Friends do not respond. Jobs end suddenly or never started in the first place. And health issues lurk around the corner, just out of view, but never out of mind. And the list goes on and on and on. I want to stay in the garden with my flowers. But as Christians, we are called to care for those in need. When I feel overwhelmed with the concerns of today, I try to do just one thing each day that follows the words of Jesus. I think of the words in Matthew 25, 40, whatsoever you do for the least of my people, that you do unto me. Friends and neighbors need words of encouragement. Social services need food and other supplies for their clients. Children will head back to school sometime and will need clothing and school supplies. And all these organizations and our own church need money to survive. Look out and see what you can do to help. The psalmist cries out with feelings of loneliness and isolation centuries ago, but also today in this very time. In ancient times, as in today, God can use us to share his love. God can use us to guide with his wisdom. God can use us for comfort and compassion. Our hymn today is one I hope will stay with you throughout the week. In the midst of the turmoil, the confusion, the boredom that has become our everyday lives, I pray that you will hear the voice of God saying to you, do not be afraid, I am with you. Amen.
The sung benediction today is one that I grew up singing. First, you will hear David sing, and then the Stockton Perkins family will sing in a round. May I give it to you with one more hope, and that is, look forward. May it be soon that we meet again. Until then, may the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and hold you in the palm of his hand. Now, go in peace and serve the Lord. May we meet again soon. Thanks be to God. Amen. Shalom, Havarim. Shalom, Havarot. Shalom, Shalom. Lehit Raot, Lehit Raot, Shalom, Shalom. Shalom, good friend, Shalom, good friend, Shalom, good friend, Shalom. Good friend. Shalom. Good friend. Shalom. Shalom, 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 Shalom,